Hi, this is Vicki Goforth Parnell. And I have come to speak to you for a moment. The Lord has been leading me on a study. Um, those of you who have noticed, I haven't been posting much. I had an unexpected trip. Okay, I wasn't going to say much about it. My son and I were headed to Tennessee to pick up the grandkids. And um, <laughs> you got to understand, this is how I believe. Psalm 37, 23, the steps of a good man or a woman, meaning a Christian, a godly person living a holy life before the Lord with their help, are ordered by the Lord. And he delighteth in his way. That goes with Proverbs 3, 5, 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. So. <laughs> we done, we prayed. And we knew if anything happened. The Lord was allowing it. When we pray we cover. Everything the Holy Spirit. We let Holy Spirit lead us. When we got to. Right even right into Chattanooga, even before. We hit traffic like we've never hit traffic before. In one hour, we went five miles. We were almost four and a half hours late to pick up the kids. In that time, I sought the Lord in Alex 2, and the Lord said, This is my will. There were, Every time we would get something flash up that said, you know, on the GPS, we put it on because of the things that was going on. And it said, um, this exit cuts off 20 minutes or this. We would pray. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, stay on this exit. You have to be obedient. Especially since we're heading, you know, back into not so friendly territory at times. And we stayed in the middle of the traffic. But every time, and there was like four different times it said, get off or you know to reduce by 20 minutes 15 minutes you know and each time we sought the lord he said stay on the you know stay on the route that you're on and every time we'd pass that exit time would be reduced instead of taking that exit where it's supposed to shorten it our time got shortened every time we were obedient but we sat for a couple of hours just non-moving and through that i have my bible with me I praise the Lord, worshiped him. Alex laid down, went to sleep. He said, done prayed. He went to sleep. And the Lord was showing us, you've got to be patient. You've got to trust him because we had prayed. Order our steps. Guide our steps. And I said, Lord, okay, you've allowed this. What is the enemy trying to do? Amy was trying to force us to be so late we would have to stay somewhere we, 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 we're not going to stay right now because that's where I had harm done to me. And so we laid it before Jesus Christ. He said, it's, it's an hour to drive to get back there. Go a little further and just, you're going to stay here. And we followed, we did what the Lord said. And got to spend a little quality time with the grandkids. So that was God working for good, but it was also a testing and a trying did I want to scream and get mad and yell at first I thought Lord I prayed I ask you to guide our steps and I sat back and I said what's going on and that's what you got to do what's going on Lord if I trust you and I've repented and I've I've done all that I'm called to do and I'm in a, a four and a half hour delay of traffic because even once we got through all that we got about 30 minutes from the kids, and we got into another traffic jam. And um, a truck just, you know, mysteriously, well, I'm not going to say mysteriously, but caught on fire and held us up for a little <laughs> I praise God, because the enemy tried to manipulate us to do something, and God was going to let us see, you know, we have our own choices. It was a testing and a trying for us. But I took it, you know, I, I used it to get into the Word. And um, I took care of some business. I had some people trying to help me on Telegram because 
I started working on getting the information because the ministry has um, donated twice. We had some people donate too to Aid North Carolina. And um, I did not post it on Facebook yet because I was not expecting to be away from home and I do not have it on my phone because I don't want people contacting me. I am, it's only like on this laptop right now. Maybe the tablet, I, I don't even know. Uh, so I was unable to, and because of the way I have to log in, it's got a double authorization. I can't get in it or put it on my phone. Lord told me not to, and I'm starting to ramble. Let's pray. <laughs> I just want you to know in all things well so it looks like like Lord Lord the devil did this stop back let's not give the devil too much power my steps are ordered by the Lord okay Lord what do you want for that and then once the Lord said realize we stopped we did moan and groan a little bit once we stopped I started praying I started reading Alex prayed he laid down within minutes the traffic started moving then it stopped again. And after a while, I said, Lord, okay, can we now, are we done with this? Can we? And he said, yes. So I started commanding the traffic to move in Jesus Christ's name. He said, you have dominion. You do it. I'm like, God, you can just speak. And, but, and so I started saying, in the name of Jesus Christ, traffic, move. Traffic, move in the name of Jesus Christ. And that's when it started breaking. All glory to Father God in Jesus Christ's name. So next time, if you're in a traffic jam, don't get upset. Get your Bible out and Put it to good use. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. Let me get, let me title. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. The Lord told me to tell some of this. Okay. Here's what we're going to be discussing. How the coming three days of darkness is found in the Holy Word of God. I was just praying about this. I know it's coming. He's given me visions. He's given me dreams, direct words. I found some in the scripture. But that's not enough for some people. They don't search it out themselves. It's sad, but that's true. So I'm going to share what the Lord Jesus Christ showed me. And we're going to pray, and then we'll get into this as the Holy Spirit leads. Jesus Christ, I come to you, Lord, lover of my soul, how I love you. I praise you, I praise you. And Father God, I thank you for that trying test. I hope I never have to go through it again, but if so, I keep my Bible handy just right by it in reach, and I'm thankful I do. I, I love you, Lord. I praise you. Lord, I praise you. Sweet Holy Spirit, don't let me speak a word that's not from Father God or Jesus Christ. I ask that you would just send your truth through, Father God, with arrows of the Lord into each heart, each mind, each soul. Tear down the scales that the enemy would build up and construct around each person and around their hearts and around their minds and around their ears. In Jesus Christ's name, let's tear down those veils on those strongholds, those rocks and offenses and, and those fortresses are building up around each individual brother and sister of Jesus Christ, true children of God. I pull them down and those to come. Pierce their hearts with your arrows of truth. In Jesus Christ's name. I've already asked us to be placed under the barrier of stealth and invisibility. Meaning hide it Lord. Under the shadow of your wings. And when it needs to come out. Let it come out. But your will be done. I'm not doing this for my glory. I don't have any. The only thing I have. Only good I have is through you Jesus Christ. And your blood that's been applied. I'm nothing. I'm the least and the least. But you are everything father god you are everything sweet holy spirit you are everything so lead this lord hey she ramo hey and she lord i give you praise i give you praise i give you praise i give you praise every weapon gizmo gadget device and such like thing witchcraft all forms and such like things the manipulation and control that they operate and do the witchcraft in i bind it i bind it all in the name of jesus christ in all God's understanding and knowledge and existence. I bind all demons that's been utilized and sent out, summoned in these attacks in the name of Jesus Christ, wrapping them in everlasting chains. In the name of Jesus Christ, I, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, and I throw them into the abyss and request grievous torments and heavy burdens. Hallelujah. And Lord, I bind these demons standing on Matthew 18, 18, Luke 10, 19, James 2, 
19, Father God, your word cannot fail. James 4, 7, your word cannot fail. And I send this prayer out with your word. You have been showing and teaching me how that when Jesus Christ was tempted, he used the word to combat the enemy. And he had to use it more than once, just like we do, because he kept attacking him till it was over. Help us stand in the word and not be moving or wavering in Jesus Christ's name. Lord, I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. Hallelujah. 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 Holy Spirit, sweet friend, is there anything else I need to cover? Because I've prayed quite a bit. Father God, er I thank you. Every form of communication utilized by the enemy, known by you in all your existence and knowledge, where any type of ill-spoken word is sent out with harm which is a curse i break it i shatter it i strip it into nothing i burn it i disable it all that needs to be done father your will for your glory father through jesus christ in his name in Jesus Christ's name, now, Lord, I ask that you stir your Holy Spirit within each brother and sister, true child of God. In Jesus Christ's name, that Holy Spirit lean heavy on those with their heads still stuck in the sand. Holy Spirit, rise up and stir your people. Father God, lead us to your truth in all things. Lead this teaching in Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Hallelujah. Your will be done. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me have a little cup of coffee. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. That's been blessed. Never give up, it says. Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What does that mean? Exactly what it says. That's one thing the Lord has been pointing out to me. God attacked in my body trying to put sickness on me. Trying to put sickness on me. You know, <laughs> sorry, it's just like, really? Come on, get over yourselves. I stand on the word of God because Jesus Christ has been showing me. He said, I, I kept telling him when the sickness was trying to come on me, it's, it's gone in Jesus Christ's name. I would quote Psalms 107.20. He sent his word and healed them. That's the first part of it. And healed them. I said, Lord, it's done, done. And then I'd quote Isaiah 53, 5. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. And again, when I had that last dream, Jesus Christ and the Holy, Holy Spirit dream. And his body is like mutilated shreds. That's all I can say. I would say, Lord, there's at least one stripe for me, for my healing. And then he said, so what does, the, this is what he was asking me, what does the word say then? What does my word, what does this infallible word say that cannot lie? He says, I'm healed. He said, okay. So if this word can't lie, then who's lying to you? John 8, 44, the devil is a liar and the father of it. His word said, I'm healed. I'm healed. He asked me, do you believe this is the truth or not? Who's lying? You? I mean, who, who's lying to you? This word or the devil? Who's the father of all lies? And when he clicked that into my spirit, it's like, but it don't always go instantly. I have to keep quoting the word back, but I'm not going to yield because Proverbs 26 two says, the curse causes shall not come. Any ill-spoken word with harm. Didn't mean to get off on that. Somebody needs to hear that. Okay, how the coming three days of darkness is found in the Holy Word of God. First off, what is the three days of darkness? There's a lot of people don't know. Darkness is first mentioned in Genesis during creation. That's the first time it's mentioned. The second time is in Exodus 10, where the darkness for three days is come. It's a plague. It's a pestilence. It is a judgment from God upon the Egyptians. It's found in Exodus 10, 20. 1 through 27 and the lord said unto moses stretch out thine hand toward heaven and that that there may be darkness over the land of egypt even darkness which may be felt this darkness is alive and moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven and there was a thick darkness in all the land of egypt 
three days. They saw no other, excuse me, they saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. And Pharaoh called unto Moses and said, Go ye serve the Lord only, let your flocks and your herds be stayed. Let your little ones also go with you. And Moses said, Thou wilt give us our sacrificial, our sacrifices and burnt offerings that we may sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Our cattle also shall go with us. There shall not a hoof be left behind, for therefore must we take to serve the Lord our God. And we know not with what we must serve the Lord until we come thither. He wasn't budging. We got to make sure we got what, what, what we're going to, excuse me, what we're going to need to serve our God. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and he would not let him go. Okay, stop right there. Those of you that's question how can people go through the darkness for three days and not repent? They're like Pharaoh, some of them. This darkness is a darkness sent from God. For three days so thick that the Egyptians were not able to see anything. The darkness was so thick for three days they didn't move and couldn't see anyone, even if they were touching them. Psalms 91, 5 through 6 says this about darkness and night. 5. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrows that fly by day. 6. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. These verses tell us there's terror that can be found in night, in the night, and pestilence in the darkness. Plagues, pestilence, or a destroying angel, all kinds of things. Evil. From this it's easy to understand the Egyptians were afraid to move in the darkness, and they could be there could be a number of different reasons why. Because it's sent by God, it's also considered a spiritual blindness. And darkness upon the Egyptians. Colossians 1.13 and Luke 22.53 says. Tells us there's power in darkness. That's what it says. Power in darkness. We can identify the power with within from Ephesians 6.12 and Romans 8.38. Which tells us we wrestle against powers, principalities, rulers of the darkness of this world. And these plus more in our spiritual walk. Of faith in Jesus Christ's name. So the enemies in the darkness. Which we know when the darkness is released. The darkness comes. Because of the end time days. All that's been bound. From the kingdom of darkness. Will be released at that time. And you'll have to take that to Jesus Christ in prayer. Because it it goes with Revelation 6. Where uh, the seal. The fourth seal is released. And death and hell follows. And they start. I forget exactly which verse. Okay. Can it happen again? Or has it ever? Let's check the scripture. Excuse me. And see what it says. We're going to do everything by scripture. Here's the verses we give. And a lot of people toss it aside. They said that, that's not good enough. Ecclesiastes 1.9. The thing that hath been done. What's happened in the past. It is that which shall be. It's going to be again. And that which is done is that which shall be. And there's no new thing under the sun. So what's happened in the past is going to happen again. Just different. For example, the earth was destroyed by water. It's going to happen again, but by fire this next time. Noah's flood. And First Peter talks about, I think it's in chapter 3, the fervent heat melting the earth and other places. Isaiah talks about it. Ecclesiastes 3.15, that which hath been is now. That that's already been in the past is now, and that which is to be hath already been. And God requireth that which is past. So again, we see two, it's confirming each other. Thank you, Lord. But here's what I found interesting. I said, Lord, now, I don't need convincing, but you're leading me to study this. So, lead me, Holy Spirit. Amos 4. Verse 1, it's Amos 4.10 is the verse we're going to talk about. But Amos 4.1 identifies um, Samaria. It says, hear, the, hear this word, ye kind of Bashan, that are in the mountain of Samaria, which oppress the poor, which crush the needy, which say to their masters, bring let us drink. 
identifying it as a different nation than Israel. Verse 10, I have sent among you the pestilence after the manner of Egypt. Your young men have I slain with the sword and have taken away your horses. I have made the stink of your camps to come up unto your nostrils. You have not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Okay, this right here says he has sent the pestilence. Pestilence is another word for plague. In the manner of Egypt, what he sent upon in Egypt. So it has happened again. Amos 4, 10. Isaiah 10, 24. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of hosts, O my people that dwelt in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrians. He shall smite thee with the rod and shall lift up his staff against thee after the manner of Egypt. Staff, lift up his staff after the manner of Egypt. Moses used a staff. Aaron used a staff when they brought the plagues and pestilence after the manner of Egypt. In the same way, these things are going to occur. Take it to Jesus Christ in prayer. Everything you hear on this, you're to take to Jesus Christ in prayer. Try and test and discern it as you are called to do. If you're a child of God and you're not doing that, you're being disobedient to the Word of God. Because it says in Proverbs, excuse me, in 1 Thessalonians 5.21, Prove all things. Prove. Try. Test. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which you know. And then 1 John 4, 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they be of God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. When you take a deeper look at the word false prophets, it doesn't mean just false prophets. It means a lot of other things too. Here we have two passages telling us God had sent the plagues, pestilence of Egypt again. So yes, a three days of darkness can happen again, being the ninth plague of ten mentioned in the book of Exodus. Revelation 11, 6 says that two witnesses will have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. This means all plagues written in the Holy Bible, the Word of God. We're going to go into that. Now, the Lord took me into this part too. And we need to start to mention the Old Covenant, New Covenant of grace so you can understand how this is possible. Deuteronomy 28 speaks of the blessings and cursings that would be given to the children of Israel for their disobedience or obedience. When we come to Deuteronomy 28, 15, it starts the curses. 1 through 14 is the blessings, and then 28 to like 50 is <laughs> the curses if you're disobedient to God, which goes for the whole world, and I'll explain that. 28, 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Okay, if you're not under the covenant of grace, you're still under the curse of sin, the, the old covenant, the curse of sin. So the curses apply to you. This is their promise if they turn from God and disobey His commands. It's God's promise to us. This is what you get if you, if you disobey. Why? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. You're living in His world He created. He gave you life. And if you want to live a prosperous, health, healthy, overcoming life, you obey what He says. It's His world. He created it. Alright, so we're going to read now. Sorry. Deuteronomy 28, 27 through 29, the curse of darkness. It's in here. Remember, it's a spiritual darkness too. The Lord will smite, the, and again, I'm going to read this. He's referring to the curses of Egypt. The Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt, and with the emeralds, and with the scab, and with the itch, whereof thou canst not be healed. Botch is another word for boil. The Lord will smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. And thou shalt grope at noonday. Noon. Noonday. This is referring to three days of darkness. This type of darkness. As the blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. Here we read where God is warning of the curses. 
In verse 27, God has been talking about the plagues, sometimes called pestilences. If you look through the Bible, you'll find sometimes they're referred to pestilence. Look up the definition, do the word study, you'll understand basically the same thing. Well, they are the same thing. Pestilence of Egypt beginning with the botch, the boils. There's, this is another word for boils. Immediately after he's speaking of madness, blindness, and groping at noonday. As a blind in darkness. They, um, they are, uh, there are other references to groping in darkness, being blind, and coming at noon or noontime, such as Amos 8. Amos 8, 9. Shall not the land tremble for this, and every one mourn that dwelleth therein? And it shall rise up wholly as a flood, and it shall be cast out and drowned as by the flood of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. That's where, and this is where I keep getting, the Lord tells me, speaks to me, His noontime. His noontime. Isaiah 59, 9-10. Therefore is judgment far from us, neither doth justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold, obscurity. For brightness, but we walk in darkness. We grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we have no eyes. We stumble at noonday, as in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men. This is judgment of darkness. Job 5.14 They meet... They meet with darkness in the daytime and grope in the noonday as in the night. Now we don't know darkness can happen again because it's already happened in Amos 4.10 besides Exodus with Moses and Pharaoh. And in Isaiah it talks about utilizing, using the same manner as the staff in Egypt, meaning the plagues. Alright, Job 12.24-25. He taketh away the heart of the chief of the people of the earth and causes them to wander in a wilderness where there is no way. They grope in the dark without light, and he maketh them to stagger like a drunkard man. Here is why we know the three days of darkness can come again besides the passages that tell us God had sent the plagues of Egypt again after they were sent in Moses and Pharaoh's day, in addition to the two witnesses in Revelation 11. Because we know in Revelation 11, 6, they're coming again regardless <laughs> because they can do any plague at any time. But again, Deuteronomy 28, 58-61. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of the law that is written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God, then the Lord will make the plagues wonderful and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and long continuance, and sore sicknesses, and long continuance. Moreover, he will bring unto thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also every sickness, and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon thee, until they be destroyed. thou be destroyed. So we find here, not only when you live under the old law, meaning you've not accepted Jesus Christ, you're a sinner. Not only are you going, this is why we see so many of these new man-made, you know, things that keep appearing, viruses and stuff. Not only are you going to get what's written in the book, what all's been told about, also what's not written in the book which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. It is again mentioned in Revelation 22, 18. I mean, that's showing you it can be done again. And that's for anybody not saved. Nations, people. Revelation 22, 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of this prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. All of them. Which also goes for Deuteronomy 28 because he mentions the plagues. Thank you, Lord. We know from Revelation 11:6 again, 
the two end time witnesses can smite the earth with all plagues. And in Deuteronomy 28, 61 says, Also every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of the law, then will the Lord bring upon them until thou be destroyed. Quite frankly, the plagues come again, including three days of darkness, because God says he will send them to the disobedient and unbelievers. That's what he's saying in, in Deuteronomy 28. You're not going to obey God. Now, this I know was given to Israel. This was the old law. But when the new law of grace came in, you don't accept Jesus Christ and the covenant of grace. You're under the old law. It's the curse of sin. So, that's what you get. Okay, quite frankly, the plagues come again, including the three days of darkness, because God says he will send them to the disobedient and unbelievers. Nothing is impossible with God, according to Luke one thirty seven. We find in Revelation 16, there is another time of pronounced darkness coming, but it doesn't specify for how long. God doesn't have to tell us all the specifics because he's God and we are not. It's not written. There's no darkness coming. I've heard that in, in Revelation eleven six right there tells you it can be called down any time. And then this right here, I'm getting ready to read, darkness. But when you do the study, don't limit God. If he wants to send darkness three days every day for the next gazillion years, he can, we don't have that long, every month till time's out, he can. He's God. Because Ecclesiastes 1 9 says, What's happened in the past will happen again. He's God. We find in Revelation 16 there is another passage. Okay, Revelation 6 16, 10 through 11. This is pronounced darkness. This is during the vials or the bowls, as some calls it. Wrath. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongue for pain. And blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pain and their sores and repentant not of their deeds. This is also, they're still dealing with the boils. Yeah, another plague of Egypt. How are the curses and blessings relevant to us nowadays? I'm going to go a little bit into the, the laws to get better understanding. To answer this question, we now need to understand the difference between the old covenant of the law and the new covenant of grace. Given to us through Jesus Christ's sacrifice. For those who have accepted Jesus Christ into their hearts as Lord and Savior, you are no longer under the old law, the old covenant, but are now living under the covenant of grace. Because we are no longer under the old law, if we violate the law of the new covenant, there is grace given to us. Grace as well as time to repent of any wrong doings. We're not immediately stoned. If we were, were doing adultery or witchcraft, or you have time to repent. We're under the covenant of grace. Violating the laws of the new covenant is referring to being disobedient to what we are commanded to do by Jesus Christ, including the moral laws written in the Old Testament, the Ten Commandments, which Jesus Christ expounded on when he walked this earth as both God and man. One example is Matthew 5, 28. Now that is where he says, he takes further, thou shalt not commit adultery. If thou look upon a woman with lust, thou hast committed adultery already in their hearts. That's what that verse says, my paraphrase in it. Jesus Christ said in John fourteen fifteen, If you love me, keep my commandments. John fourteen twenty one, He said, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. So we see even in the covenant of grace, it is a matter of being obedient as we're instructed to do. In addition, in the new covenant of grace, when we accept Jesus Christ into our heart, we also inherit the blessings of Abraham which include everything written in Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14, which is the blessings. That's, that's amazing. Romans six fourteen, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Jesus Christ prayed, paid a horrible price for you to have grace. 
Galatians 3, 13-15 Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, and we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after this manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth it or addeth thereto. Why is this important? Why does it have to do with the world today or the three days of darkness coming again? It's important because when you understand, if you're not under the grace covenant, then you are still living under the curse and living under the old covenant. There are those who think that believing in Jesus Christ is not enough and add in addition an obligation of keeping the laws too. They have caused themselves to fall from grace and be under the old law once again. This also includes those who try to work their way into heaven because salvation's gift is freely given. You don't earn it. You receive it in faith, believing in Jesus Christ and what he's done. And the verses, I'm just going to give those. Romans 6, 23. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Titus 2, 11 through 12. Romans 5, 15 through 18. And also 10, 9. I got that backwards. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Those trying to get to heaven through Jesus Christ, but also works, are those who have opened themselves up to the curse of the law that Christ had redeemed them from because they have chosen themselves to have a merit-based relationship with Father God and Jesus Christ instead of the unmerited favor that comes in the new covenant with Jesus Christ as our Lord. You choose either His grace all the way or the curse under the law. There is not a mix and match alternative. Paul calls in, says in, Paul calls in Galatians 3.10, those who introduce the law of the old covenant into their walk with God, with Jesus Christ, foolish. All who rely on the law or their own works, meaning their ability to keep the law, are under a curse, the curse of sin. They can't escape it because if they break one law, they've broken them all, which keeps them or places them under the curse. In addition, those who have never accepted Jesus Christ into their hearts as Lord and have never repented are still under the curse. You only receive the new covenant of grace by receiving his gift of salvation. And again, we have Galatians 3, 10 through 15 for that. Romans 10, 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. What a Savior, what a God. There are many children of God, men, women, even children who have been given dreams, warnings, and visions of three days of darkness coming again. We see now through the Holy Word of God, it has happened again after occurring during the, during the days of Moses and Pharaoh. And with all the warnings coming, coming forth, it will happen again. We are told in Amos 3, 7, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealed his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. He's, he's revealing it. Men, women, children, anyone that will listen. Even some of the unsaved has said received dreams about the three days of darkness. And it's in all walks of life. I mean, a lot of people will, will just automatically dismiss the three days of darkness and say it's from the Catholics. They may have been the first person to have it, but that doesn't call, mean that every person calling on Jesus Christ and calls them Lord and can say, Jesus Christ is my Lord, that's having these things. In every denomination that Jesus Christ is preached, even though not all of it is accurate, there are people that really have accepted him into their hearts. 
that goes with the Catholic Church. Not everybody is worshiping falsely. And, and what I mean by that, not everybody is embracing everything that's going on in the Roman Catholic Church. I mean, three times and since September, the Pope has already more or less declared the one world religion, if you're paying attention, saying that, that all religions lead to God. And, and more or less denying what's in the Bible. You can get to the one true God through any religion. That's wrong. That's not what the Bible says. They're casting the word of God aside for the one world religion. Didn't mean to get on that. We read in Exodus 10, with the children of Israel, they had lights while the Egyptians were in the horrifying darkness. During the return of the three days of darkness, those who've accepted Jesus Christ into their hearts shall have some form of light because they're under the covenant of grace. That's why you have some form of light if you've ever accepted Jesus Christ into your heart. Just as God's people, the children of Israel, did. He's no respect of person, Romans 2.11. This is also why those who are living a clean and holy life, or bride ready as I call it, will have supernatural lighting of some type. These are those who are walking obediently in holiness in their lives, as they're commanded to do by the Word of God, with Jesus Christ and sweet Holy Spirit's help. We are commanded to live holy and righteous and to do all that we can to, to not look back from the plow, to forsake all, but we can only do it with Jesus Christ's help and that of Holy Spirit. Sweet Holy Spirit is a dear friend. If you will let him lead, he's the same spirit that resided in Jesus Christ. You know he's not going to lead us astray. He's a sweet, sweet friend. This is also why those Christians who are straddling the fence between the world and serving Jesus Christ, meaning you, you accepted Jesus Christ into your life, so you're now under the covenant of grace, but you're being unfaithful to Him. But He's still showing His faithfulness. This is also why those Christians who are straddling the fence between the world and serving Jesus Christ who have sin in their lives shall have light during the three days of darkness, but it will be candlelight. He's still honoring his covenant, whether you honor your part or not. He's called in Hosea and Isaiah, our spiritual husband. He's being the faithful husband, whether you are or not. He's providing. This is also determined by the spiritual health. Okay. Let me read that again. Who have sin in their lives shall have light during the three days of darkness, but it will be candlelight. This is also determined by the spiritual head of the house and whether they are bride ready or found with sin in their lives. The spiritual head of the house. If you have a husband and wife, for example, saved and the husband is not bride ready, but the wife is. Because he's the spiritual head, he's going to have candlelight. You're going to have candlelight. You're still going to have light. But because he set up the ordinances, the church, Jesus Christ is over the church. The husband is over the wife. This is God's standards, the way he set things up. Please pray about taking Jesus Christ in prayer. That's all I can tell you. Okay, the only way... Light of any kind is possible during the three days of darkness is by Father God, given to us through His mercy and grace for His children. That's it, mercy and grace. Those who are living under the covenant of grace and have been redeemed and justified by our acceptance of Jesus Christ into our hearts. If not for the covenant of grace, then we would be in complete darkness also with the rest of the world. The old covenant and the new both are the same in one aspect. Obedience. Okay, how do we know the curses are not just for Israelites and not everyone else? There's many nations 
that are non-existent from God's judgment of sin for disobeying His commands and serving false gods. If these were only applying to the Israelites, these other nations would not be judged. Edom, Jeremiah 49, 17-22. These are the verses where they've been, you know, the judgment. The Hittites, Amorites, Rizites, Canaanites, Hivites, Jebusites, Exodus 23, 23. Assyria, Zephaniah 2, 13 through 15. Sodom and Gomorrah, Genesis 19, 24 through 29. The Moabites, Zephaniah 2, 8 through 10. And the Philistines, Zephaniah 2, 5. That's just a few of them. We can now see the three days of darkness have appeared in our world more than once and are going to happen again one way or the other. There are many other verses that speak of the darkness, some directly while others are indirectly. Now, when I was pulling these scriptures, because I do have scriptures listed here, I was not pulling those. When you start studying the three days of darkness, you start studying the great day of the Lord, you start studying the... Revelation 6, the earthquake, you start studying all the different times, the signs and the moons, the sky, the return of Jesus Christ, you're going to see them start separating. This goes here, this goes here, this goes here. And what he had me do was just pull separate from the great day of the Lord. And I'm going to give a few of these verses. For example... Ezekiel 32, 7 through 8. And when I shall put thee out, I will cover the heaven and make the stars thereof dark. I will cover the sun with a cloud, and the moon shall not give her light. And the bright lights of heaven will I make dark over thee and set darkness upon thy land, saith the Lord God. I'm going to call out these verses to those that want to take them down. And then, Lord willing, we'll get this over. This is a few direct verses not previously mentioned. The verses stand alone from the dark darkness verses of the great day of the Lord. Ezekiel 32, 7 through 8. Jeremiah 13, 16. Jeremiah 23, 12. Wherefore their way shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall therein. For I will bring evil upon them even the year of their visitations, saith the Lord. Isaiah 13, 10 through 11. Thank you, Lord. Lamentations 3, 2. Acts 2, 20, 21. Isaiah 5.30 Isaiah 8.22 Joel 3.14-15 Romans 11.10 Micah 3.6 Okay, here is a few indirect verses not previously mentioned in the, the study and some are symbolic so take these to jesus christ in prayer he did tell me to share these now lord willing with the lord's help if he leads me i will share this right here either on telegram facebook um youtube in the um That it's not the chat, but you know where where you go from messages, Lord. Where you pitch comments, yeah. And most likely, if the Lord leads, I'll upload this on the My Lovely Jesus Ministry website. I don't know exactly where yet because it's three days of darkness. Okay, the few indirect, not previously mentioned. To give you an example, First Samuel two nine. First Samuel two nine. He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for my, by strength shall no man prevail. Isaiah 9, 19. 
Through the wrath of the Lord of hosts is the land darkened, and the people shall be as a fuel of the fire. No man shall spare his brother. There's a lot coming in that. Colossians 1.13 Job 3, 4-7, verse 9, Job 15, 21-23, Job 17, 12, Job 19, 8, Job 22, 10-11, Job 30, 26. Again, these are indirectly. Proverbs 4, 18 through 19. I'm supposed to read that one. Okay, Lord. But the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness they know not at what they stumble. Indirect. Psalms 107, 10 through 11. Isaiah 60, 1 through 2. Proverbs 69. So, excuse me. Psalm 69, 23. Apologize for that. Isaiah 8, 22. Matthew 27, 45. Luke 23. 44 through 45. Mark 15, 33. Matthew 12, 40. Jonah 1, 17. Now the last few scriptures I have, for those of you that actually take the word of God and stand on it, these are a few verses about light in the darkness. So if you feel fear trying to come upon you, if you fear, if you feel these things, bind it and cast it down. It's fear is a natural reaction. It's just don't stay in it to where it becomes terror. David said in Psalms 56, 3, what time I am afraid, I will trust in the Lord. So you bind it, the fear, cast it down, quote scripture to yourself. If you quote it out loud or write it down on a paper and then read it. You're also putting it in. You're hearing it. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word. I listen to the word of God a lot. Non-stop if I can. I'm in between praise and worship. Got to have it both. Okay, here are verses, a few verses about light in the darkness. I'll give you an example of what this is. For example, 2 Samuel 22, 29. For thou art my lamp, O Lord, and the Lord will lighten my darkness. There's more verses. I just have a few of these. Psalms 18.28 For thou wilt light my candle. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Promises. Promises to his children. Job 29.3 When his candle shined upon my head and when by his light I walked through darkness. Luke 1.79 I give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Psalms 112.4 Psalms 139.11 Proverbs 4.18 Micah 7.8 John 12, 46. I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. When you ask the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ's name or Jesus Christ himself to help you to study these things out, he will lead you. I had no doubt, I still do not doubt, the three days of darkness is coming. Can I say that, Lord? Okay. My understanding, 
at this current time, right here, right now, is it still coming this year? I get that over and over. When I pray, when I fast, when I see. Do I know the exact moment? No. If it's for me to know, God will tell me. I trust Him. I'm just being prepared myself. Do I have things to watch for? Yes. But that's not all I can share. I share what I can. I trust Him. I trust Him. But I'm not one of these that's so confined that if God says, okay, I'm going to change change it, I'm not going to get me down shape. Even if I give a gazillion words saying, hey, but she's not said it's going to be this year, come right out. I'm telling you, that's what I'm hearing. But I know he can change things. I am repeatedly hearing it still this year. But he has repeatedly, in times past, when I've tried to understand when I first started prophetic before i understood like two weeks i mean two years lord you gave me this word i don't understand he took me to amos 7 and amos 7 is where the lord tells amos constant face-to-face -face conversation with amos and gives him a vision you know those people say you god don't do that they have a discussion there along with many of the other prophets and you know god does not change you just go through jesus christ now he says he's going to bring the caterpillars, destroy the land. And Amos petitions, Lord, we're, we're small, who, you know, he petitions for them. It says the Lord repented, meaning he didn't have a change of mind. Judgment's still coming. Meaning he had a change of how he's going to do it, a change of heart. I'm going to do it another way. It doesn't say how much time in between. Then he tells them, I'm going to send fire. He has a vision of the fire. And he repent. you know, he he. Call, excuse me, petitions the Lord again. And the Lord is a big wood bug. <laughs> Sorry. And the Lord, though, repents again, meaning judgment's still coming. He didn't repent and forgive them and said, it's not going to happen at all. It means repent, meaning he changed his heart, had a change of heart on what to do there, not his mind. Judgment's still coming. He was moved by the passionate cry of his beloved Amos, his child. But in the end, we know at the end of the chapter, after the plummet line, where Amos is telling, you're going in captivity, war's coming. We know that was the final, and God was not relenting on that. Currently, I am still hearing it's coming this year. And... That's all I can say. Just, you know, pray about it. I have things to watch for, things that he's told me. They're lining up, clicking off, one, two, three, four. But I, I'm not at liberty to share unless the Lord Jesus Christ opens up. I do have one thing. Do, do you want me to go ahead and do that, Lord? You have to say this. Okay. Um. Let me first thank everybody that's sending the cards and, and the encouragement and the donations and the prayers. And But I'm receiving a lot of questions, which when you're given the prophetic, you're supposed to give it out and everybody sick the Lord Jesus Christ on it. You're supposed to because the Lord speaks in riddles and parables and your understanding is to be opened by Jesus Christ and Father God. But I repeatedly had people question about what does before the seven end means? Before the seven, not seventh, before the seven ends. It has multiple meanings. But when he talks about before the seven ends, before the age ends, before the new, before the old, before the old expires, before the new, you know, before the new begins, he is referring to before the old age of the covenant of grace expires, before the new age of the great day of the Lord, before whenever between the great day of the Lord and the tribulation. That's what he's talking about, before the seven, because he has spoken many times, even Gabriel has spoken, the angel Gabriel, and said, seven is the Lord's number for completion. So it is completion, the completion of the seven. Before the seven, before the completion of the age of grace, which is about over, these things will happen, what he's mentioning. But you still have to take that and try it and test it and give it to Jesus Christ in prayer. Give it to Jesus Christ in prayer. 
I ask that you take all this to Jesus Christ. When we see that the Amos 4.10, at least there's one other time when actually the pestilence of plagues were sent. We can't limit God. He's God. He's God. He can call. The, it's like he, he can, it's not written in the word of God. On, so neither is every single thing, every miracle Jesus Christ performed. The book couldn't take, the Bible could not contain everything he's done. Or every command Father God gave when he, when he created this world. You know, he made the animals, he created, but he did not say he he created the gazelle, he created the camel, he created the alligator, he created, you know, and he made the intricate design. We just understand that through the other scriptures. Supplied knowledge. If it's happened once, it can happen again. The only thing that won't happen again is this world will not be flooded. Totally flooded. Like Noah's Ark, because God made a promise not to do that again. So he's going to destroy it by fire. Yeah. New heaven, new earth will come down. Sin will never have touched it. The new earth. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> I get excited about that. All right. I actually take this to Jesus Christ in prayer. Now, I will be, I am going to load this up, he said to Jared. I have to go through and, and I've got a few where I need to correct it. Lord one, I will share this. Even even in times of judgment. God is faithful. And I want everybody to realize. Holy Spirit, lead me how to say this, please. Even when we see these terrible things happen on this earth, we know we're in times of judgment. But when we find out that there's been manipulation of the enemy, of mankind or others, whether you like to believe it or not, such as manipulation of the weather, look up cloud seeding, if nothing else. Manipulation of the weather. And we see these horrible things coming. They still cannot do damage or strike unless Father God allows it. This is His earth. That's why He says to pray. We can lessen the severity if it's in times of judgment. If we don't stand up and take a stand. If we don't ask Holy Spirit how to pray about these things. Yes, in times of judgment, sometimes we are not to pray about things. Pray not for this people in Jeremiah. But in other times... You pray you can lessen the severity. Judgment's still coming, but God is still merciful. There's still His children in America. There's still His children across this world. There's still His children inside Israel. There's still His children everywhere. And that mercy may not be what we want. It may be the taking of their life to get them out of the situation. But He knows what's best. When we see these disasters happen... We still ask the Lord, how do you want us to pray about these things? How do you want us to pray, Lord? How do you want us to pray? I won't pray against your will. This is me. I won't pray against your will. If you're causing these things to happen, how can I pray effectively, though? How can I pray for your children? And that's what I'm focusing on. His children. Because Jesus Christ in John 17, 17. I think it's John 17, 17. In John 17, he prayed for those that were his. The true children of God, brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ, those that would accept him in the past, I mean, those coming in the future, and, and those of us, those that were there. It's not always easy. I would like to get and pray to Father God, stop all this, stop all that. I can't. We're in judgment. I won't pray against his will. But I ask him, is there any way I can pray for your children? Your children, Lord, is there any way? Holy Spirit, lead me to pray. You know, and sometimes my prayer has been, Lord, move your people out of the way. He says, this is coming when I pray. No, this is coming. Lord, if it's possible, if your children will listen, because again, he may put upon them to get out of the way and they may choose not to. Just, that's an example. Let the Holy Spirit lead you in all things. There may be some of those that are supposed to stay when these things happen. 
And it may be that uh, by them being there, they're the only light. Survive whatever happens, tornado, hurricane, whatever. So that there is somebody there to witness about the love of Jesus Christ. And how there's still hope. Alright, take this to Jesus Christ in prayer. I didn't mean for this to go so long. Again, my understanding right now, when I pray and seek and fast, I'm still getting it's coming this year. The three days of darkness. I am. And before seven ends, again, is before the age of grace expires, is completed, is finished. The completion of the age of grace. That's one of the meanings. All right. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I ask you to accept Him into your heart today. He is a love like no other. I can never get tired of saying that. You don't have to clean yourself up to come to Jesus Christ. Come as you are. He loves you as you are. No matter what you think may be the most horrendous sin, the most horrible thing you've ever done, the Holy Spirit's still dealing with you. You still have God speaking to you. You still feel convicted of your sins. You're still savable. And if you have backslid, meaning you've turned, you, you, you've accepted Jesus Christ into your heart, but you're letting things of this world get in your way. You've gone back to some of your wrong ways. You're committing adultery or fornication or you're watching dirty movies, porno. Porno's a big thing. That's sad. That's sad. That's demonic bondage. Jesus Christ came to set you free. It's time to repent. And be willing to give up these things. A lot of times, a lot of times, yes, there's those strongholds. But a lot of times it's because deep down inside, you really don't want to be free. I find that a lot of times when I'm ministering to people. If it be the Lord, I want free. The Lord's will is not for you to sit there and look at pornography. I will set no evil thing before my eyes. David said in Psalms. Say this prayer with me, please. Jesus Christ, speak to my heart. Change my life. Wash me clean with your precious blood and forgive me of all my sins. I confess you are the Son of God, of Jehovah, and that you came to this earth, born of a virgin, as both God and man. You rose again, triumphantly, on the third day, so I could be free. I accept your gift of salvation, right here and now. And I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. In your name, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. And it's that simple. The gospel of Jesus Christ is so simple that even those of slow minds, and it's not meaning any disrespect. It's not. It just means it's so simple. Even the simplest of minds can understand. Children can understand. I understood it when I was five years old and accepted Jesus Christ into my heart. Five years old. It can happen. Each come to the age of accountability at different times. And I understand why. Because of the call on my life. I recommend you get you a Bible. I have the JKV. This is a my old faithful Bible. Actually, I just um found, praise God, I didn't know I had my Bible when I was 14 years old. It's coming all to pieces. 
But the information in that Bible, I can't remember which brand it is now, it's KJV, but it gives history of the making of the Bible that I can't even find on the internet. I just like, thank you, God. I thought I'd lost it. So praise the Lord. He's 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 just wonderful. I recommend you get your hard copy. Now that is actually the KJV. Now understand this, the Lord Jesus Christ has led me to the KJV. But I had somebody make a comment saying that I was saying it's the it's the one that's all powerful, the one with with the no no no. What I am saying is the KJV is the one that originally came down um, from the Vulgate and from the other. The Geneva was before it. Through the use of the KJV is where most of the majority of your great revivals like Azusa Street and, and others through the preaching and using of the KJV. When I seek the Lord Jesus Christ, this is what I'm told to use, but I still studied the KJV, I mean the Geneva at times. Where my son, he's not able to, he is able in Jesus Christ's name, but he wanted to get into the Word of God that these and thousands the way it's written to him is like poetry, and my son has always hated poetry. I'll just be honest, he hates poetry. And he wanted to get into the Word immediately. We prayed, well, I prayed, because he sent me like, come in from work, said, I want a Bible. Mama, get me a Bible, but don't give me a KJV. It was two hours before the store opened. He used to work nights, you know, at the, I immediately went into praying. Started pulling out, you know, doing research. I knew so many of them had verses left out and messed up, really messed up. Even this, and, and the Lord referred us to the common English Bible, the CB. There are some changes in it we found late recently. But with everything that's going on with, with the translations and copies, you ask Holy Spirit or Jesus Christ in Jesus Christ's name to lead you to which translation? Because in the end, you're going to get the truth, the Word of God from Jesus Christ in heaven, who is the Word of God made into flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. He was the Word that came down in the body of flesh and God, so that He could redeem us. We could become justified, so He could atone for our sins, so that we could live with Him. It is my personal choice, but I'm not going to put one above the other until God says, hey, you need, you know, he has not called me and said, I, this is the only Bible. No, because with all that's going on in all the Bibles and translations, rewording, changing so that one world religion can come to pass, we have to trust in the word forever settled in heaven. This is a word we read it, we get it in, but we pray for divine revelation. We pray for the understanding, and the word will come down from heaven the way it should be. I prefer the KJV myself. I do. I understand it. I study it. And I'm able to go back and do a lot of the research because there's so much more compiled history. But even in that, you need to be led by the Holy Spirit. I don't like people putting words in my mouth I didn't say, but I forgive them. I'm just saying, seek Jesus Christ and Father God in all things. Ask Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit comes into you once you get saved. Actually, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the fullness of the Godhead rested in Jesus Christ. The Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And that's who's inside you. That's how you can be an overcomer through Jesus Christ. Okay, take this to Jesus Christ in prayer. Try, test it. Prove all things. Hold on. Hold on. Bride of Christ. Hold on, it's about time. God bless in the blood of Jesus Christ always.